I got off with Chad closely behind me. Giggity giggity. Giggity good. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content. Anywhere on the internet, promise swearsies it's just a fact. And it's totally science, go ahead and look it up if you want. Whatever, I can't live your life for you. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. Yes, indeed. So I've been digging through neckbeard stories and I found uh, another saga for us to delve into written by user Typhoid Mary. And this is the saga of Casino Beard, who's apparently a security guard. That's right. You can keep yourself safe and sound with a neckbeard. I'm sure he'll do his best. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord, what are we in for? Anyways, we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some Neckbeard Stories cringe. For being a security guard, you'd think he'd understand boundaries and rules. Yeah, but he's a Neckbeard, though, <laughs> so he don't. <laughs> this is part one of Casino Beard Saga. Okay, so the generic first post, typing on mobile, been a lurker for a while thing. Okay, well, I used to work at a very popular casino as a night shift security guard. And boy, do I have some stories to tell. Capitalize on the tell. <laughs> but this is about one of my coworkers. Our characters are OP, 18 year old, five foot seven girl, working night shift security at a casino because I was desperate and moving apartments, and my day job was just plain unreliable. I have a lot of tattoos, generic punk vibe all in all, big hipster glasses. I'm not a shy person when it comes to my personal space. And then we have Casino Beard, 30-something overweight man, CB for short. He must have been 6 foot, easily 350 pounds. Your generic greasy hair in a ponytail, dirty glasses that were too small for his face, and insane acne located on where his neck beard would have been and on his forehead. And then we got Chad, super buff 20 something man, easily six foot five and as sweet as could be. Notorious for having sprained his ankle in high school and it just hasn't been the same. He looks like your generic Chad, hence the name, and has a couple of tribal tattoos. And evidently he was Casino Beard's rival before I even arrived. And this is the story of my first encounter with Casino Beard. I had just showed up to the employee lot and was waiting for the shuttle to take me to the employee entrance of the actual casino. It was my first shift of midnight to 8 a.m., so I was already tired. There were other people waiting who were wearing the same security uniform, along with other employees like dealers and waitresses. They all seemed pretty hyped to have a girl on the security team mostly because they needed someone to escort drunk women out of the bathrooms. <laughs> they were all very kind people overall. Chad was among the group, and he was very welcoming. And then he showed up. I saw him out of the corner of my eye. Just a massive blob. <laughs> so simple, so evocative, Mwah, beautiful. With his uniform clinging on to his rotund body for dear life, he shuffled painfully slowly across the crosswalk from the parking lot to the bus area. There was an audible sigh from the group that I had been talking with, and that should have been my first hint. The bus rolled up when he was about 10 feet away from the group, and everyone rushed on. Chad put a hand on my shoulder to make sure that I went on before him, and he was the only thing between Casino Beard and I. Looking back on it, this was probably Chad's way of preventing Casino Beard from getting a good long look at my ass. <laughs> Chad knows what do. I was rushed to the very back of the bus and ended up standing with a few other of my new co-workers. Some were sitting down and that was okay with me. I think the standing was the only thing keeping me awake at this point. And that is when it all started. Gentlemen, could one of you please stand up for the lady? That voice. It sounded like Peter Griffin from Family Guy, but with something lodged in his throat, almost spongy sounding. If you squeezed water out of a sponge and it could make a human voice, it would sound like that, 
like he was almost drowning. Lois, I'm only going to tell you once. Have you heard about the bird? So it's like Peter Griffin meets SpongeBob or something like that. They kind of got the same laugh. Nah, versus like, ah! <laughs> A lady should have to stand up on the back of the bus. I turned my head and saw him. Lord Casino Beard. <laughs> he was maybe six inches away from me. I don't know how I didn't feel the bus shake as he edged his way closer to me. His wireframe glasses looked like they were fogging up, but mine hadn't. It wasn't even humid or anything. God, that is just how dirty his lenses were. To be fair, I am a psycho when it comes to my glasses lenses, and I'm very picky about having them touched. Yeah, this dude got glasses covered in pizza grease. <laughs> how do you even see through them things? <laughs> Once again, the audible sigh from my co-workers. Chad was sitting down, which I get now because of his bad ankle, but Casino Beard's eyes were burning holes into Chad. I mumbled slash yawned. It's fine, I, I want to stand up anyways. The bus had lurched forward just as Casino Beard was about to say something, but his inglorious gut slammed right into me. <laughs> what a gentleman! <laughs> I stumbled backwards, but managed to catch myself on the railing on the side of the wall. Casino Beard never apologized. He also didn't step away. But then, that's when it hit me. The smell. How iconic. A mix of body odor and axe deodorant. <laughs> it reminded me of middle school, but the intensity of it uh, damn near knocked me out. Hey man, can you like move back a little bit, I said, not trying in any way to hide the irritation in my voice. He scooted back a little bit, but by this time we were already at the main building. This jerk decided to block everyone from getting off and try and insist that I slide between him and the other seats to get off of the bus first. I mean, really? Is now the time to be holding doors? We all just want to get to our posts. I motioned with my head for him to just move, and that, coupled with my notorious resting bitch face, got him to just move himself right along, albeit probably very slowly. <laughs> I'm still surprised he didn't get stuck just trying to get off the bus. I got off with Chad closely behind me, and Casino Beard was waiting right next to the door. I just ignored him. I didn't want to get involved. I go on the internet, I know how these neckbeard stories go. <laughs> <laughs> The internet saves another one. <laughs> You're welcome. As Chad and I were walking to the security post, easily like a quarter mile inside the building, we were just talking. He has a tattoo on his neck, so being polite and a tattoo enthusiast myself, I say, nice ink, man. So what does it mean? Tattoos are so normy. <laughs> Casino beard. Where did he even come from? Was he following us? For being the human embodiment of Jabba the Hutt, he is awfully quiet on his feet. Or maybe I was just too drained to even hear him. Chad snapped around and just said, What's your problem, man? I don't want you scaring off the only lady on the team with your prison tattoos. <laughs> I turned around to see the fucking grin that was carved into his face. His smile lines were so deeply cut I can only imagine his resting face is a permanent snicker of entitlement. He isn't scaring me off, dude, I mumbled. I happen to like tattoos. I actually have a few. Oh no. I made a massive mistake here. Red alert! Red alert! I should have just quit and went home to play Skyrim and be poor! God damn it! <laughs> just play Skyrim and be poor. Man, I feel that too much. <laughs> uh, fuck a job, man. What I need a house for anyways? <laughs> uh, oh, really? Of what? Casino Beard's smug little face started turning red. Now, you see, I had a childhood deeply entrenched in abuse and video games. Escape the abuse by playing video games. Now, with that being said, I hate being touched. 
this should be noted, I hate being touched without consent. I'm sure a lot of you feel that way. And because video games hold such a special place in my heart, I had a Pokeball and the red and green mushrooms from the Super Mario games on my left wrist. I've since added Peach's crown and a few other nerd things. We stopped on the side of the hallway to let other people pass us so they could get to their jobs, but Casino Beard's size made that a little bit hard. <laughs> Regardless, I pulled up my left sleeve ever so slightly, showing the easily identifiable Pokeball, and then I saw his arm move. Like, not the, wow, that's so cool, can I touch it? kind of movement that I usually get. Nope. It was very reminiscent of times that I've had people just grab me out of nowhere. I instinctively lurched back and put my arm down, but the damage had been done. His fingers brushed against my sleeve and closed in the air. I could already tell this dude does not respect boundaries. Right as I was about to start walking, I looked up at his face. It was beaming. And I shit you not, it was like meeting one of those people who I play online games with in real life. Wow, I didn't know a girl like you would be in the video games. Oh god, here comes the gatekeeping. <laughs> and that did it. The rest of the walk, it was going to be Pokemon this and Pokemon that. What's your favorite Pokemon? Uh, what's your favorite game? I'm not getting paid enough to work here. The new games are bullshit. Yeah, sure, buddy. Chad looked about ready to kill himself. <laughs> as soon as we got to the security area, Chad put his hand on my back and guided me over to the kiosk where we checked in, and he was super nice and helpful in teaching me how to do it. You know, I could have showed her, Casino Beard mumbled, again, merely inches away from me. How can I not hear his footsteps? <laughs> I was at my wit's end. Well, I wanted Chad to help me, I said firmly. My mom's a preschool teacher, so she taught me a lot of helpful hints in dealing with, uh, underdeveloped minds, like standing your ground. God, I almost started crying when this part happened. There's no abuse, so really no need for a trigger warning, but this fucking big, massive, sweaty guy did put his wet little sausage fingers on me, oh god, <laughs> and pulled up my sleeve. Fucking, yeah. I could feel the heat radiating off of his fucking ogre hands. <laughs> the descriptions kill me, dude. Wet sausage fingers and ogre hands. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> His gross, chewed-up fingernails grazed the skin on the tops of my hands. It felt like the sound of nails on a chalkboard. Just before he could make a comment on the rest of my mini nerd sleeve, I had already ripped my arm away from him. Wow! <laughs> Those are so cool! Especially on, on a girl! Mm. Casino Beard was fucking glowing. I was petrified and backed up towards Chad. I guess Casino Beard took this as a personal offense. Chad doesn't even know anything about that stuff! Casino Beard had gotten a bit louder. I was officially done. Do not ever touch me again! I was basically hissing at this point. I walked away towards another kiosk and Chad followed suit. Learn to take a compliment! <laughs> Casino Beard grumbled under his breath. I basically broke my neck, snapping it back at him. Never put your hands on me. My tattoos aren't yours to touch. At the time, I was just totally pissed off and exhausted, but in hindsight, it didn't do all that much to phase him. It just started the cycle of me saying no, and him taking that as change my mind. <laughs> neck beard through and through. And that was the first 20 minutes of my relationship with this man. I have plenty of other stories, including the one where he was my singular reason for quitting. If anyone wants to hear, let me know. It gets way more cringy as the first night went on. Note, I was okay with Chad's physical contact because it was over my clothes and very light, as opposed to Casino Beard's grubby fingers touching me. And also, Chad was hot. <laughs> 
Definitely a disaster of a human being, but honestly, I've experienced things exactly like this. You know what I mean? People are like, oh, what's your tattoos? Let me give my opinion on it. It's like, dude, I didn't get this fucking tattoo for you, okay? I got it because it means something to me, and that should be good enough for both of us. <laughs> you don't like it? Guess what? You can get a completely different tattoo. Isn't that something? <laughs> I distinctly recall being at the Ren Fair and like going to buy a turkey leg or something like that and this chick's like, oh, what, what's your tattoo? I'm like, yeah, I got a ba bomb right here and a, a bullet bill right here. And she's like, those are dumb. And I'm like, I wasn't asking for a fucking opinion from the turkey lady. <laughs> Shut your mouth and get my turkey leg, wench. <laughs> and her jaw just about dropped through the floor. But yeah, you want to come at me like that? I'm going to give you both barrels. <laughs> Trust me. The Casino Beard story is especially interesting because OP doesn't seem to be giving him any ground to keep on making these approaches and stuff, but he just keeps on keeping on, and I have no idea why. Or, I mean, I do have an idea why, because he's a neckbeard, but that really punches a hole in my theory of, like, eviscerate them within the first five minutes and they will leave you alone. I guess not all neckbeards is built the same. Ugh, but I guess we'll see how much worse things can get as the first shift with Casino Beard continues in the next post. The first shift with Casino Beard. That, that's what I said. <laughs> Pray for me. Part two of Casino Beard Saga. I didn't expect quite the reaction from my first tale of Casino Beard. Ah, uh, our greasy, fat antagonist. <laughs> I'm writing this on the notes app of my phone while on an airplane and copying and pasting, so just a warning for any grammatical mistakes. Our characters! Yes indeed, OP is back, so is Casino Beard. Chad is apparently becoming the work husband even on the first shift, which is kinda weird. <laughs> and then we got Mr. Rogers, the supervisor, a 50-something jaded as fuck war veteran with a soft spot for me, not in a creepy way. <laughs> Again, sweet as all heck, and very Mr. Rogers type. He will be my savior in many Casino Beard attacks. God, man, Mr. Rogers is just like my favorite person ever. How can one man be so pure and wonderful? God, we need you back, Mr. Rogers. So, back where we left off. I'll recap part one very briefly. Casino Beard tried very hard to befriend the only lady on the security team, i.e. me, and in doing so, violated my personal space issues while trying to look at my dorky wrist tattoos, a Pokeball and the Super Mario mushrooms, and Chad had inadvertently become my protector and also my work trainer. So after my event with Casino Beard at the clock-in kiosk, I was just waiting with Chad for instructions from my new shift supervisor, Mr. Rogers, the sweetest man that I've ever met. But first he had to like, you know, change his shoes and put on a sweater or something like that. He <laughs> uh, could obviously tell that I hadn't had a good time with Casino Beard. Luckily for me, when I turned around to look at Casino Beard, he was fumbling with his employee card to clock in. So, relatively far away from me. Mr. Rogers appointed Chad as my trainer, so essentially I'd just follow Chad around for a week or two until I got into the swing of things. So, I was on Chad's schedule. Now, the way this casino is set up, there are two parts. The fire and ice sides. Whoa, that sounds cool. <laughs> the fire side is mostly a big circle of gambling machines and tables with a few restaurants on the outer ring and a small concert area in the center. The ice side is a long shopping strip with a similar gambling circle at the end along with the poker rooms. Both sides have their own hotels. I'm changing the name of the casino, but if you know what casino I'm talking about, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> casino Beard still works midnight to 8 a.m. there. So let's all go over there and give him a visit. Be like, hi, I, I heard about you on Reddit. <laughs> I look at the schedule and Chad was on the fire side and was posted at podiums for most of the night. I checked out Casino Beard shift and he was on the ice side doing patrol. You basically just walk around and bring poker chips to and from gambling tables. This meant that I wouldn't be seeing him, at least while I was on the floor. At least, that's what that was supposed to mean. <laughs> Casino Beard don't play by nobody else's rules, okay? <laughs> well, we took a roll call, and I was briefly introduced to the rest of the team. 
It was all men of varying ages and ethnicities, and one small old Chinese lady. Wait, I thought, she, I thought OP was the only girl on the team. Or maybe they mean the security team. I bet that old Chinese lady uh, deals for blackjack or something like that. I could just imagine standing there, smoking eight cigarettes at once. Adorable. <laughs> she was standing next to Casino Beard and looked visibly disturbed, perhaps by his odor, perhaps just generally who he is as a person, though probably both. It was time to break, and Chad walked me down a corridor that opened up to the Fireside Casino, and we walked past the post to go get our radios, basically glorified walkie-talkies. It smelled like cigarettes and depression out on the floor. <laughs> I personally love the smell. It reminds me of my grandpa who lived in Las Vegas, lol. Cigarettes and sadness should be a candle scent. That is the worst business idea. <laughs> Uh, then again, if I'm ever away from my wife, I could just give her one of those candles, and it would be like I'm still sitting right here. <laughs> Cigarettes and sadness. <laughs> he walked me up a flight of stairs near some bakery, and we walked over to the hotel on the fireside. We stood at the podium and checked people's hotel keys before letting them up to their rooms. It's standard in a lot of casinos. It was pretty quiet for the first two hours. We stayed at posts in three-hour rotations, and we also got a 30 to 45 minute break for each rotation. Not too bad, in my opinion. 30 to 45 minutes? Hopefully on the 45 minute side, boy. Who's gonna lean towards the 30 minute side? <laughs> we were about a half an hour away from going on break. I was leaning on the podium, basically half asleep. The smell of cigarettes and the general casino vibe was calming me down too much. I was dangerously calm. But then, I smelled it. <laughs> the warning before the storm. God damn it. Chad sighed. You're on ice tonight. What do you want? It was him. Casino beard. I swear I could hear him sloshing in his shoes. He was sprinkled in sweat. His pit stains were about as dark as my soul. <laughs> and his forehead was shining brighter than my future. <laughs> God damn, this is so well written. I love it. OP, you're great. <laughs> I just want to let you know. Just wanted to be sure you're trading her right. <laughs> Casino Beard smiled. God, that was the first time that I looked at his teeth. I really wish I hadn't. Now, I had braces for damn near seven years, so my teeth weren't anything to talk about before, but his? Holy shit. You know when people don't ever brush their teeth? So plaque has just started festering between their teeth and gums. Oh, God, not this. Oh, that's cringe. Yeah, that was him. The tips of his teeth were dotted black. Oh, no. The enamel had completely eroded. I almost threw up in my mouth. And I sympathetically am almost throwing up in my mouth. Jesus. I'm the person who uses several toothpaste because I'm scared of my mouth bacteria becoming resistant to any one toothpaste. So you can imagine how fucking sick his teeth made me. Bacteria becoming resistant to a toothpaste? What the fuck? Is that even a thing? <laughs> I think I need to change my toothpaste now. We're perfectly fine. You can go, Chad insisted, gesturing for Casino Beard to turn back around. Uh, it's 2 a.m. Nothing is happening, and uh, I don't trust your abilities to trade the lady. Good lord. Does this also count as a white knight story? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people call them white knights. Here at Red X Industries, we call them Beardicus Militinevius. Big shout out to Fire Drake for writing up those neck beard definitions. See, they're coming in handy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm perfectly fine. He has plenty of time to teach me the other stuff, I said flatly. I was hoping the more angry and uninterested I sounded, maybe he would be able to take the hint. Nope, he just walked closer and rested against the opposite side of the podium from me. I guess saying, no, go away, was misconstrued as, no, but convince me otherwise. <laughs> I stepped back and just leaned against the wall. I don't know what he was trying to do, but he had his hands clasped together and he was breathing heavily. 
Now the casino isn't that big, so really he shouldn't be out of breath. Especially if this is his job. <laughs> and then his breath hit me. Oh god, his breath. Neckbeard Akis Odifari, coming your way. <laughs> He's a hybrid. It smelled exactly like getting the wires changed in your braces. Oh. Ew. Or someone that hasn't flossed in a while. Or someone who doesn't clean their tongue or mouth jewelry and it grows plaque. That's so descriptive. Please stop. That smell. <laughs> I hope I hit enough demographics of people who know what that smell is. Oh, only too well. <laughs> At this point, I was truly disgusted. What other tattoos do you have? He said with a disgusting, pathetic, stomach-churning smile. That's none of your business, I said. His eyes lit up. Oh, fuck. What now? Is your tongue pierced? God damn it. Yeah, it is. But I didn't say anything to him. I just clenched my jaw and attempted to channel my inner Medusa and just turn him into a fat slab of stone. It didn't work, unfortunately. Chad was obviously getting super annoyed, mumbling, You should go or we could get in trouble every so often, but Casino Beard just wouldn't budge. What other piercings do you have? He said with an even bigger shit-eating grin. He looked down at my chest. In full disclosure to all of you, my nipples, tongue, lower lip, and nose are pierced at this point. But you can't tell me that's not a wildly inappropriate thing to say to a co-worker on the job who's also probably 15 years younger than you are. Like, if anyone could bear to touch him, he was probably old enough to be my dad. Ugh. I just had to stifle my vomit. Wow, that's wildly inappropriate and I am super uncomfortable, I said. A little louder than I usually would. Normally I do this if people are catcalling me or generally being disrespectful to show that I'm not afraid to be loud and get help. But nope. Then he said something to me that no amount of soap could cleanse from me. Ah, I can't wait to find out for myself. Chad reached for his radio and immediately said something along the lines of Casino Beard is off post and harassing our new recruit. I can't recall exactly what he said. After what Casino Beard said, all I could hear for the next hour was a faint ringing in my ears. <laughs> I swear I popped a blood vessel or something. Mr. Rogers said something over the radio that I couldn't quite make out. Casino Beard's face went dead and he loudly stormed off. I'm still not sure exactly what had just happened. I think he ended up in Mr. Rogers' office or something. Casino Beard got a point or something because he was out of his patrol area, and that was thankfully the last I saw of him that night. He wasn't in the break room, I didn't hear his voice on the radio, different radios for different sides of the casino, and the rest of my first shift did go fairly well. I was exhausted by the end of the day, but my blinding rage kept me awake enough to drive home and complain to my mom and shout into the void on Twitter. <laughs> And that completes the first shift with Casino Beard. If y'all want to hear more, just let me know. God, man, I just love a good train wreck. <laughs> I think everybody that hangs around this channel enjoys a good train wreck. And when you put Primo writing on top of it, mwah, so beautiful. His pit stains were as dark as my soul, and his forehead was shining brighter than my future. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put that on a t-shirt. God damn. A plus, pure poetry. I'm, I'm living for this casino beard stuff. It is an older story, but that doesn't make it any less good, you know? Personally, I haven't heard this story told, and I have no idea why, because it is absolutely beautiful to find such a perfect, disgusting specimen in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be back to Casino Beard eventually. I'll probably get to uh, Burger Beard tomorrow. That's the plan, at least. I know the Burger Beard saga is going to be ending quite shortly, so I've just been kind of dragging my feet on it, trying to make these sweet moments last or something like that. <laughs> 
We've also got the beard of a thousand irritations. There's a good, f there's a fair few sagas going on on this channel right now. And I definitely hope that you guys are enjoying it. And don't mind me adding one more into the mix. It was, it was, it was me. I just wanted coffee, dude. We all do. <laughs> Casino Beard Saga, part three. Well, well, well. The response has been overwhelming. I had given it a few days and I am back with the next tale in the story of Casino Beard. I will be telling all of these stories in chronological order, so at the tops of all the text posts I'll have part XX. This installment is a bit of a quickie, well at least the event is short. And now, on with the show! I don't know why you put part XX, I know this saga doesn't get into the double digits and it breaks my heart. <laughs> But anyways, our characters are OP, an 18 year old girl, I have some dorky tattoos, look like a punk, and I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Casino Beard, CB for short, 30 something, tall, fat, greaseball of a human being with no regard for boundaries. Can't believe a girl likes video games. And also can't believe that a girl doesn't want him to touch her. <laughs> Lamau, what? <laughs> And then we got Chad, 20-something, tall-as-heck Chad-looking dude, is quite aware of Casino Beard's antics and is becoming my work husband. Mr. Rogers, my shift supervisor, a 50-something, jaded-as-hell war veteran with a soft spot for me, but not in a creepy way. Again, sweet as all heck and very Mr. Rogers type. He will be my savior in many Casino Beard attacks. Now for some context. I had started my job in January of 2018, right after the new year. Because Chad was my trainer, I was going to be on his schedule for the next two weeks, so I had two nights off. Hallelujah. But alas, that came to an end. This story isn't as intense, but it does give a lot of context to Casino Beard's behavior in future stories. Again, our story starts waiting for the bus to take me into the casino. Manic Monday was playing on the radio. <laughs> How fitting. Man, God bless YouTube. I mean, I don't get days off anymore, but <laughs> at least I ain't got to worry about Mondays. Chad and a few other of our coworkers were waiting for the bus, and I was just screwing around on Instagram when out of the corner of my eye, I saw him again. Our lovely antagonist. Such beauty. Such grace. He is our Miss 2008. His clothes were so tight against his skin. Did he get fatter over the weekend? It's possible. <laughs> I like to think that that was the biggest uniform that they had available, because literally everyone's uniform, including my own, hung slightly loosely off our bodies. Baggy black khakis, a loose-fitting black shirt, and our jackets. You'd think he just walked out of a hot topic because of how tight his clothes were. And not in a good way. <laughs> I'm talking about you could see all them jelly rolls. <laughs> the bus rolled up before he got a chance to catch up. I was sat at the back of the bus next to Chad and the wall. The bus ride was normal. Got off, took the long walk to the security area, and clocked in. This story takes place totally before work, again. So while you're reading this, just remember that I had a whole 8 hour shift afterwards. Good evening, he said. Casino Beard was standing behind me at the kiosk. I had just swiped my employee badge and was ready to book it for the cafeteria to get a coffee. It was 11.30, so I had about 15 minutes to kill. I would quickly learn that this was in fact not good. <laughs> It'll be the longest 15 minutes of your life, OP. I ignored him and swiftly made my way between him and the kiosk to the cafeteria. It was small, with a Pete's coffee inside. I hustled over and asked for a small black with an espresso shot. For being a woman of such taste, I, I didn't think you'd take it black. Fuck. Did he follow me? Wait, was that racist? <laughs> oh, God. Was that an actual comment on race or just coffee? <laughs> I'm gonna assume it was just coffee. 
we've seen no other uh, racist proclivities, so I'm not going to make that leap quite yet. <laughs> if it were anybody else, I would think it were just about the coffee. Holy hell. Adding sugar is a great way to drink your calories, I mumbled. Now, my mom lost about 100 pounds when I was a child, and she instilled all of her healthful ways into me. And a big thing was not to drink calories, especially calories that didn't have any nutrition, so I stayed away from sodas and juices and heavily sugared coffees, and I spent a lot of time studying nutrition, and I even worked as a dietary assistant for a while, so I know a thing or two about how our bodies function. I love a woman who cares about her body. <laughs> he smiled creepily, pouring easily like a fifth of a cup of sugar into his coffee. He had a fistful of those little single-serving hazelnut creamers, and I was starting to see why he was so fat. I love a man who takes care of his, I said, with an obvious look of disgust on my face. You could see his whole body tense up. The gears were turning in his head. Steam was starting to come out of his ears, and there was a hot wash of red coming over his face. <laughs> well, it's the lady's job to stay fit so she can raise kids. Men don't have that kind of standard, he said. Little flecks of spit came off the tip of his tongue while he spoke. Good lord. All right, guys, we have a traditional man over here. Isn't it everybody's responsibility in the relationship to take care of themselves? Why would you hold somebody that you're dating to a standard that you don't hold yourself to? You know what I mean? That don't make no sense. Just so much expectations from the side of the ladies and it's so unfair. I mean, it's pretty clear to me that this guy's just lost in the sauce anyways, you know? <laughs> I think at this point he should be grateful for any lady who would look his direction. <laughs> And that's certainly not OP. And I'm also not going to accept traditional man as an insult. As long as, you know, you're actually being traditional and not, um, casino beard. Okay, here I said something that I definitely shouldn't have. Because it would have prevented the rest of this conversation. But I seized my opportunity. I took it and it still feels great. In my world, it's also a man's job to be able to fuck me missionary without crushing me. <laughs> it's very relevant. Shut up. Well, expect a fucking backache. <laughs> my wife doesn't know anything about that. <laughs> I'm light as a feather, stiff as a board, you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey! <laughs> The fact that you started having sex with your partner is like accepting the fact that, you know, you get a uh, backache after. Sex is too good that you forget about the back pain after, <laughs> you know? I don't want to hear any more about this back pain. <laughs> <laughs> I just really wanted this dude to know that his weight was a huge turnoff and he had to leave me alone. But of course, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you'd never be on top of your husband? <laughs> That's fucking deplorable, he hissed. <laughs> Wait, I thought he was a traditional man. <laughs> his face was red, his knees weak, arms were heavy, vomit on a sweater already, mom spaghetti! <laughs> Little beads of sweat glistened on his forehead. Only if my husband can return the favor, I hissed, moving as quickly as I could back to the security area. God, that felt so good. I got a quick glimpse at his face. His stupid jaw was open, and his nasty teeth were hanging out. His brow was furrowed to a perfect V on his forehead. His sparse unibrow hairs did their best to be the center of attention of his gross, acne-ridden forehead. <laughs> Oof, I felt so powerful. I walked back out to where Chad and Mr. Rogers were standing. They looked visibly concerned. Casino Beard was in there. You good? Chad asked. Yeah, I'm alright. Hopefully he'll leave me alone for the rest of the night. I smiled from behind my coffee. I don't know, just... 
pointing out to a fat, slimy bastard that no girl would ever ride him and he could never properly fuck a chick was powerful to me. Was he a virgin? Probably. <laughs> is he lurking on this sub? I hope to hell that he is. Uh, this normally happens when girls sign up, Mr. Rogers sighed. God, this has happened before? Hopefully, he'll get bored of you. We can pray, <laughs> I smiled. I felt better now that Casino Beard knows full well that I will put him in his place. Unfortunately, this would not, in fact, stop him in the future. This is easily the most gentle encounter that I've ever had, and it was basically about Casino Beard thinking that I was staying in shape for a man. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I was. I was all up on that Tind game. <laughs> <laughs> OP keeps it real. <laughs> but it wasn't for him. <laughs> God damn. It's like the coolest OP. So, to shortly summarize what we've learned about Casino Beard today, he thinks men are a gift to women. Women are only good for raising children and pleasing men. And he's an even bigger perv than we thought. This will all be relevant. As a spoiler, he uses... You're just a girl. Many times. Oh, I'm just a girl. Oh, little old me. Now don't let me out of your side. Oh, I'm just a girl. What's my destiny? Don't let me have any rights. Whoa, I've had it up to here. And so OP has. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks on the job, she's already like, I hate you, and I'm gonna tell you to your face that I hate you. It still kind of puts a hole into my theory about, like, eviscerating a beard immediately, and then they'll leave you alone. Because one thing that we've learned neckbeards are is stubborn, determined, somewhat unstoppable, no matter how you treat them. Because the truth is, it's not really a you problem, it's a them problem. So no matter how you react to the situation, they are going to continue to be them. And I guess that's all right as long as we stay us and keep pushing back against this. <laughs> uh, I also like the uh, the musical injections. I'm, I'm picking up what OP's putting down over here. <laughs> We're going to have to write the neckbeard rap song sooner rather than later, I think. But that's for another day. For now, I suppose we'll get into part number four of Casino Beard and see just how far... This big, fat, tiny worm is willing to take things. Just a girl is a cursed phrase. <laughs> Casino Beard Saga, part number four. Welcome back to the story of Casino Beard. Oh, it's been so long. <laughs> Our fat antagonist who made my mediocre night job a living hell. I'm sure you all know the deal, so I'll just introduce the characters. Yep. There they are. Oh, Simba is a new addition. Another co-worker has hella long hair. Looks like a damn lion. Super sweet to me, but a douche to anyone who isn't a girl or a bro. You know the type. I guess I should have saved Chad's voice for Simba. We're gonna have to get creative here, guys. <laughs> and then Freckles. Super tall, skinny guy. Has a Gears of War tattoo on his shoulder. Possibly the only friend of Casino Beards. Very nice, but legitimately doesn't understand how none of us like casino beards. <laughs> Be very wary of the company you keep, that's all I'm gonna say. You might get hit with that beard label right alongside them. Anyways, believe it or not, this story doesn't take place at work. It's how this scumbag decided to try and worm his way into my life and crash a date that I had with Chad. Bro, I knew that's the direction it was headed. <laughs> it all started with me getting home from work on a Thursday morning. Exhausted, sweaty, and drained from having to pull drunk girls out of the casino bathrooms. <laughs> How much you getting paid for this job? <laughs> it ain't enough, I'm gonna tell you that. I opened up my front door and was greeted by my dogs. It's honestly my favorite part of the morning. My younger dog reaches up for a hug, and my older one follows me back to my bedroom to take a nap with me. And by nap, I mean like six hours of sleep. Yeah, man. Night shift is hell on the body. I remember doing 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. At a, at a gas station and just 
Oh man, I was totally wrecked. <laughs> the pay was good, but at the end of the day, eh, not worth it. Once I was under the covers in my cave of darkness, <laughs> snuggling with my little furry guy, I did what everyone does in our technology-addicted society. I went on my phone just to check my social media, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess I know. Really, that's an hour of lost sleep as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Whatever, I'll check it at work tomorrow. Instagram would be the battlegrounds for this morning. I go to my notifications, and what do I see? Casino Beard is following you. Ah, damn it. <laughs> just block him. Instant. It was his first name and then just numbers following it for his username. My heart sank. Casino Beard likes your post. Oh, God, what post? Wouldn't you know it? He liked something sacred and dear to my heart. A picture of my old man dog asleep in his chair. It felt dirty. That by him liking my post about my baby, he just ruined something sacred. He knows about my son now. <laughs> you don't ever talk to me or my hairy son again. <laughs> I know it's a bit anal and probably mean or bitchy to be like, Wow, he liked my photo. What a creep. But we've already established that... He is a much older man who's basically preying on me and borderline sexually harassing me sometimes at work. And to know that he actively searched for my Instagram and found it and liked a post of my angel baby dog made me sick. Nobody told him my handle, so he went snooping for God knows how long to find it. It's not linked to my Facebook. It's a Insta. I was just disgusted. With the thought of him looking for me and then looking at my baby. <laughs> I immediately blocked him. Good move. And switched my account to private. Better move. And then I said a Hail Mary to try and cleanse my dog. <laughs> Best move. <laughs> oh, fast forward to that evening. I was up about 2 p.m. and didn't have work until midnight. Nice. I received a text from Chad at about 4-ish. Hey, want to go to insert sports bar name here tonight with like a couple of people before work? Just like dinner and maybe a drink, it read. I mean, I'm too young to drink, but hey, I never get invited places. Hell yeah. Does this mean I have friends? So this is what it's like to be in a social group. Nice. <laughs> I said, hell yeah, obviously, and started getting ready. So this is what it's like to be in a friend group, having social obligations. Hard pass on that. <laughs> I'm too old and I just don't care no more. But at 18, yes, I definitely would have gone too. Now, I'd be going back home before work to change into my uniform and stuff, so I went all out. High heels, short black dress, and my usual 90s grunge makeup look. And some dark red lipstick. Fuck it, right? Chad picked me up from my house, and we met a few other co-workers there at about 7. It was Simba and Freckles. They already had a round of beers going. I quietly asked for a water from the waitress. The playoffs were on, and these boys were hyped. I wasn't alone. I had some buffalo wings. Life was good and wholesome, and I was happy. Now, I'm accepting bets for how long you think my happiness lasted. I would totally make a bet, but I can see in the spoiler, it was maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> I would have said like, you know, five hours up until midnight we had to show up at work. But I would have lost that bet. I felt a draft. <laughs> oh no. It's like when an evil wizard enters the tavern or something. <laughs> the front door was opening and then slowly closed, leaving an icy blast of January wind to hit me in the back. I could feel my bar stool move with every pound of those footsteps. I knew deep in my heart who it was. I didn't want to believe. I was ready to give up and just let the void take me, swallow me whole. I look over to the guys. Simba and Chad were looking at Freckles like he had just killed a puppy, and Freckles had an awkward smile on his face. I thought it would be rude not to invite him, he mumbled. I, I didn't think he'd actually show up. I snapped my head around, and there he was in all of his slimy glory. 
I almost shit myself. He had it. He was wearing it on his head on purpose. It was slightly too small for his manhole-sized head. <laughs> That's a big old noggin, bro. Manhole size. <laughs> Black with gray pinstripes. Oh, no. This confirmed it. It was... It was... A fedora. <laughs> I scoped him up and down. Was this bitch wearing dirty sweatpants to a sports bar? Yep, he sure was. Gray sweatpants and some sandals that looked like <laughs> they had seen better days. And a long sleeve shirt that was slightly too short. Ugh. And showed the bottom of his nasty, sparsely hairy stomach. God, I could have gagged and thrown up. Nice to see you fellas, <laughs> he said, grinning his nasty, dirty teeth. Oh, hell. I was happy just moments ago. Holy hell. He turned to me and his lips curled into the biggest shit-eating grin. You look gorgeous this evening, as every m'lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just got m'ladied. I'd only ever heard about it in urban legends and comic book stores. I never once thought I would be on the receiving end of a m'lady. <laughs> I wanted to go home and just soak my body in battery acid to get to cringe off me. <laughs> but I don't think that would be strong enough to even scrape the surface of how uncomfortable I was in that moment. He got up on the bar stool directly across from me. Freckles and Chad were on either side of him. Chad and Simba were next to me. Simba was well aware of the situation and hated Casino Beard long before his antics with me. That's how it is with most of my coworkers, to be fair. Casino Beard ordered a beer, Bud Light. Jesus Christ. We're in a bar. He could have had anything, but he chose a Bud Light. <laughs> okay. <laughs> OP is 18, she doesn't even drink, and she knows how garbage that is. <laughs> Chad scooted his seat closer to mine, and Simba leaned closer to me as well. It was more of the three of us against the two of them at this point. I mean, Freckles is nice and all, but he's too nice. You know how I felt about Casino Beard. Screw you, Freckles. <laughs> Only water for the lady. <laughs> Don't be daft. We can handle seeing just the girl drink. Am I right, boys? <laughs> he smiled cringely. <laughs> Oof. I was ready. Who the hell talks like that? Really? It's 2018. Stop white knighting all over the place. God, being called just a girl by him is a recurring theme, and it... TRIGGERS ME! <laughs> I totally would drink, aside from the fact that I turned 18 literally in September, I hissed, sipping my water. I took out my phone to text Chad that we had to leave. Wow, I didn't know you were that young, Casino Beard said quietly. His face went blank, only for a second. But then that smile creeped back onto his fucking acne-ridden face. Must not have had a whole lot of experience then, do you? What the hell does that even mean? <laughs> I almost burst into flames from pure anger. He just will not take a hint. When will you ever understand? I'm never going to accept your creeping advances towards me. I barked at him. It was loud. I wanted it to be loud. I wanted the people at the bar behind me to know Casino Beard was here and wasn't welcome. I also wanted the staff to know that I was feeling harassed. It got a little silent. The waitress and I exchanged looks really fast. This was the kind of bar that you can order angel shots at, the ones that basically tell the staff that you're in trouble, and they'll call the police if you order an angel shot. She came over and asked me if I'd like a drink, and I said, not yet. <laughs> In hindsight, while typing this, the bar staff did more to protect me from Casino Beard than my own management team did. Wow, that's fucked up. 
All right, back to the story. What do you think you're doing? She's a literal teenager, Chad said to Casino Beard. The words obviously went in one ear and out the other, and Casino Beard did not fully grasp the situation. Well, you see, he has an underdeveloped frontal lobe, as most beards tend to do. He's actually incapable of higher thought. <laughs> wow, I, I didn't realize you two were a fig, I guess, Casino Beard said, with the most hardened look that I'd ever seen. First of all, not a thing. Second, Casino Beard looked about ready to rip Chad's head off. Third, how did he get that into his head? I started to say, we're not a fit. Let's go! Chad interrupted me and jumped off his seat. I carefully stepped down from the bar stool, because heels, when Casino Beard started scooting his seat back, saying, I I'll help you, dog! I snapped, and I was basically yelling, Never touch me! I was so pissed. I was getting flashes back to when he grabbed me on that first night on the job. His grip was tight. It was then that I made the connection. This man could hurt me. I quickly darted out of the bar and towards Chad's car. I could feel it, that hot wave of anger and frustration, and then the tears. Was I afraid of Casino Beard? Well, at this point, it was safe to say yes. And that is a good reminder, as always. We like to laugh and make fun of beards, but, you know, they are dangerous animals at the end of the day. Some more dangerous than others, and Casino Beard? Definitely a Beardicai Predoracum, as far as I'm concerned. Chad promised me he'd bring it up with our supervisor, Mr. Rogers, but he can't do anything except make sure that we don't work anywhere near each other, which was already silently in play. It was a train wreck. I'm glad we left before he got a chance to say anything about Instagram. If he brought up my dog, I would have flipped. He is in no way invited to my social media platforms, but it gets brought up again, unfortunately. Thankfully, I didn't see him at all that night at work, but I was still a mess. That's all for now, my friends. I shall bring part five in the next few days, and to clear some stuff up, the managers don't really give a shit about what Casino Beard does to me. The turnover rate was super high, and Casino Beard had worked there for years and did overtime and doubles all the time, and they were critically understaffed, so the upper management really didn't do anything about it, especially because I was a night shift worker. They don't care what happens at night, and I ended up quitting maybe six or seven weeks after from this point, so from a business standpoint, it was smarter for them to just ignore it than it was to fire Casino Beard. I appreciate all the feedback, and I'll get to working on the next parts. Good lord, I hope that is not a bit of foreshadowing. God knows we can't deal with another situation like Wheezy Beard. Oh, I pray for your safety, OP. I mean, this happened a long, long time ago. You're out of the situation, obviously, but even just hearing about it now makes all the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Like, I really didn't like the guy before. Thought he was disgusting and beardy. And now, once you put it into terms of, he can actually hurt me, it gives kind of that reality check, and it's like, oh yeah, let us not forget what we are dealing with here. I seriously hope Chad punches him in the mouth at some point or another. Ugh, this has just been a wild ride, and we are only getting started. The blackest present for the most brutal of all bass players. Nothing! I beg your freaking pardon? I don't know, Typhoid Mary. I just said I was going to read some Casino Beard, okay? Please don't be mad. <laughs> this is Casino Beard Saga part number five. Here we go again, my friends. Part five of my trials and tribulations with Mr. Casino Beard. Slimy ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you called him Mr. and then insulted him. That's pretty nice. Bring him up just so you can knock him back down. <laughs> Whatever. I'm going to try and make this one short. This is the night after the sports bar incident, which we covered in the last episode. Links in the description as usual. I am doing my best to tell all of these in order. Oh, me too. Preach. <laughs> Our characters are OP, an 18-year-old girl, first time working a proper night shift, I have some dorky tattoos, look like a punk, and I'm not afraid to speak my mind. Casino Beard, CB for short, 
30-something tall, fat greaseball of a human being with no regard for boundaries. Can't believe a girl likes video games and also doesn't want him to touch her. Lamau, what? <laughs> Chad, 20-something tall as heck Chad-looking dude, is aware of Casino Beard's antics and is slowly becoming my work husband. And of course, Mr. Rogers, the shift supervisor. A 50-something jaded-as-fuck war veteran with a soft spot for me, but not in a creepy way. <laughs> Again, sweet as all heck and very Mr. Rogers type. He will be my savior in many Casino Beard attacks. Alrighty, so... I'll set the mood. It's Friday night or Saturday morning, depending how you look at it. It's 3 a.m. I'm finally used to my night schedule, so I'm not drop-dead tired anymore. And it's my break. Chad is the one breaking that night, basically going around telling people when they can take their breaks. And he hooks me and Mr. Rogers up with a second break. And that's when food is the best, because they push all the old food from the last shift to the first break people. Thanks, Chad. Yeah, he's looking out, you know, you're working hard, you deserve some fresh food, alright? <laughs> now Mr. Rogers is my supervisor for the nights, but is also Casino Beard's supervisor. Mmm, see how that works? <laughs> so he's been making sure that we were always on separate sides of the casinos, or at least that our schedules would never line up. So if I do see Casino Beard, I can also report him for not being at his position. Unfortunately, the two differing parts of the casino have different radio lines, so we don't know who takes breaks from other sides of the casinos, but we do all have the same break room. I see where this is going. <laughs> and wouldn't you know, who has the same break as me? Oh, Chad's not looking out as much as I thought he was. <laughs> I saw his massive body squeeze through the smaller frame doors that led into the room. Like he straight up had to walk sideways to even get inside. Shit. I was just trying to eat my frickin' mozzarella sticks and enjoy my coffee. <laughs> he sees me and smiles. Ugh, that smile still haunts me to this day. Mr. Rogers was sitting across from me and obviously saw the panic in my eyes. He turned around and... And when he turned back, his normally sweet face was completely soured, like someone had shoved a whole ass lemon in his mouth and made him chew it up. <laughs> Not Mr. Rogers. He deserves better. <laughs> Casino Beard quickly, in quotes, <laughs> quickly made his way to the cafeteria. No surprise there. I guess he does move fast when food is involved. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogers and I were at one of the smaller tables with just two chairs, so it's not like he could have sat down next to me. I completely lost my appetite, so I let Mr. Rogers pick at my food too. Unfortunately, there was an empty table about four feet away from us, and guess who comes hobbling over with probably half of a fucking sausage pizza on his tray? I'm super hungry, guys. <laughs> Mr. Rogers helped me finish my food with the quickness, while Casino Beard creepily stared at me while eating his pizza. He'd fold each slice in half, and basically take just two bites before the slice was completely gone. You hungry boy! <laughs> I could hear him eating, even from four feet away, and every single massive swallow that he made, you could basically hear it plop into his disgusting oversized stomach. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, Opie's good at painting them pictures. I love it. <laughs> it's cringy, but I love it. The sheer size of his stomach meant that there was an audible echo. My eyes started watering <laughs> from pure disgust. It was like watching those videos of people who are obese, but pick through trash cans. Just <laughs> a weird mix of disgust and pity. But that feeling of pity didn't last long. <laughs> Obese people who pick through trash cans? Who's watching those videos? What is this a side of YouTube I haven't been to before? <laughs> I think I'm gonna stay far away from it. Mr. Rogers looked me in the eye, then eyed the bathroom. Shit. Okay, fuck it. When you gotta go, I guess. He slowly stood up and took the napkin out of his lap and set it down on the seat of the chair. I guess this was supposed to symbol that he would be back, and the seat was currently occupied. 
He threw a dirty look at Casino Beard before walking quickly to the bathroom. And this is where Casino Beard decides to butt in. Ah, that, that's awfully benevolent of you, sharing your food with that decrepit old man. <laughs> Who the hell uses words like benevolent and decrepit in everyday conversations? I bet if I wanted to reconnect with Casino Beard, I could just go to r slash I am very smart and find him lurking. Damn it. Nice to know he respects Mr. Rogers enough not to call him decrepit right to his face. Because, yeah, it's not like he was in combat fighting for our freedom just so Casino Beard's bitch ass could get fat and jerk off to anime titties all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got his number. <laughs> Piss off, I mumbled, pulling out my phone. It's great to see the fair maiden being nice to everyone else and then blocking me, <laughs> he said with his stupid goddamn smile in what I assume was supposed to be a condescending voice, but it just sounded like he was angry and trying not to cry for some reason. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's so good. I wish Casino Beard would cry. That would really get me hooting and hollering. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how I'm nice to people who are nice to me. Could he really not take the hint? To think, I, I was really enjoying your photos, but I guess you're too hung up over everyone else's dick to bother with me. What? What did he say? I'm sorry, I chirped. I meant it as more of like, I beg your fucking pardon. But this dense asshole actually took it as an apology. <laughs> uh, oh, Lord. He doesn't listen to tones. He just listens to the words that are said. If I were you, then you should have blocked me and hop off of Chad's dick. Because he does this to every girl that works here. <laughs> Okay, how can he really be that dense to think that I'm actually sorry? And what the hell would I even be sorry for? Okay, I don't know what's going on in your thick skull, but Chad and I are not a thing. And he's not been anything but polite and helpful. Oof. Oof. Oof! <laughs> My blood pressure is raising. Someone get me some aspirin before I have a freaking stroke. <laughs> You know, he banged the last girl that worked here, but I don't see you like an object like he does. <laughs> <sighs> oh, Casino Beard, you're so transparent. He started scooting his chair over to me just a little bit. Is he really that hung up over all this? Even if Chad had slept with the last girl who worked here, it didn't matter to me because I'm not attracted to Chad. And he had the nerve to say that he doesn't treat me like an object. Like, boy, what the heck? <laughs> That's all you've been doing since I got here. Clearly, you do think of me as an object. If you think I'm too stupid to read Chad and make my own decisions, I said through my teeth. For fuck's sake, I was clenching my jaw so hard that I thought my teeth would shatter. <laughs> Milady, you, you don't know these people like I do. Oh, for God's sake, if this guy maladies me one more time. <laughs> Everyone has the general consensus that you're scum. And these people haven't given me a reason not to trust them. But you have put your grubby hands all over me and made blatant sexual remarks. And basically, I'm not going to stand for that shit, I hissed. It was all true. And I would have said this all sooner, but... I didn't want him to keep coming back to try and change my mind that he isn't complete garbage. I had a similar situation in high school where I called a dude out for being a perv and he just spent the rest of the year trying to convince me that he wasn't. But I guess history repeats itself when I can't hold my freaking tongue. This is interesting to me and it's yet another hole in my theory that if you eviscerate a beard immediately then they'll leave you alone. I guess we'll need to take this into account. I'd like to talk with OP. The reality of the situation is that it's probably just creepy dudes being creepy. And they can't stop being creepy. Some are far worse than others. Mr. Rogers! <laughs> are you done shitting yet? <laughs> Please save me. Wow, I was just looking at your tattoos. 
Learn to take a compliment, you conceited bitch. <laughs> He's really winning my lady over now. <laughs> uh, he said all this, and his face looked genuinely surprised, like it was some sort of secret that I felt that way about him. Okay, cool. If I'm so conceited, then why are you even wasting my time by bothering me? It's true. Seriously. If I'm such a bitch, then why are you even talking to me, dumbass? You've been brainwashed by everyone else. <laughs> You'll come around, he whispered. He took his tray of what was basically now just a puddle of grease and got up. Brainwashed by everyone else. Yeah, everyone else is the problem, bro. <laughs> it couldn't be you. Definitely not. Uh, holy hell. What the hell was that supposed to mean? You'll come around. That's super threatening. Again, if I am such a bitch, then why bother? At this point, I was borderline ready to panic. Mr. Rogers was still in the bathroom, and I had a full 15 minutes left of my break. I just put my headset back on and went back out to my post. I was done. I couldn't be in there. Holy hell. Yep, sometimes the last 15 minutes of that break just ain't worth it. <laughs> Why subject yourself to this? Now, from this point on in the story, it is way more intense. Basically, the rest of the saga is Casino Beard getting progressively more creepy towards me, and then me finally quitting. So I guess this is a trigger warning for every part from here on out. I don't necessarily believe in trigger warnings, but... I don't want to upset anyone who genuinely came here to just read the silly neckbeard post, so I will include those at the top of the next post. Don't believe in trigger warnings. I mean, that's okay if you don't have things that trigger you, but if somebody else does, like, who does it hurt to leave the trigger warning? I guess the point is kind of moot, because she did decide to leave the trigger warnings in, so whatever. <laughs> Thanks for reading. I'm surprised this many of you enjoy it. I appreciate every comment and every private message, and I do try to respond to all of them. Part 6 will come in a few days. Yeah, I think I'm going to slap part 6 and 7 together, make like a, a nice beefy final video like we like to do. It was a little bit awkward because we had three parts and I couldn't really figure out a way to like fit all of them in without making a gigantic video, which I'm already late tonight. <laughs> Or a short video, which I, I can't live with myself with that. Come on now. We gotta hit that 20 minute mark <laughs> at the very least. It definitely seems to me like Casino Beard is uh, coming out of his shell. He seems to be getting more and more bold and this is not a good thing. As for pointing fingers at the last girl and how she banged Chad or whatever, like honestly, I doubt that part is even true. He's just trying to drive a wedge between OP and Chad, which OP has even admitted that she doesn't really find Chad attractive in that way. But Casino Beard just can't accept the fact that she also does not find him attractive in that way. <laughs> Isn't that weird? You don't actually have to be attracted to anybody. Wow! What a revelation! <laughs> It's super sad to know that this dude, like, remained at his job for so freaking long. Couldn't get a lawsuit going. Couldn't get him fired. It was brought up in the comments of my last video, like, why people don't get fired very quickly. And, yes, it does protect some people from wrongful termination and stuff like that. But there's also cases like this. And, honestly, you just hate to see it. It's absolutely horrible to stand by and watch. You're gonna die. Capricorn. You're gonna die. Dope. Stock my Finsta and follow my car. Okay. Cool. This is fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. Not really. Part six-ish of Casino Beard. Hello, friends. I have finally returned with part number six of the Casino Beard saga. Sorry it's been taking like a week to get around to writing these, but I do have a decently busy life. Full-time job, and trade school, and pets, and a workout slash 5k schedule, and a boyfriend, and, you know, life stuff. Damn, that schedule's so packed. Makes me feel like I'm doing nothing. My stuff is like, YouTube, workout, <laughs> play with kids, and uh, that's about it lately. And I'm still like, oh, I don't know when I'm gonna have time to... If if this OP can do it, then then I can do it. But yeah, I apologize for the delays. 
I've been condensing this story and only really telling the big doozies and leaving out all the little times that he just said something stupid. So hopefully this is the semi-final, maybe? It is. <laughs> Confirmed. Here are our characters for this tale of woe. OP, 18-year-old girl, first time working a proper night shift, have some dorky tattoos, look like a punk, not afraid to speak my mind. I also live my life online, so I got that Twitter, that Insta, that Facebook, and also an Insta page specifically for my pet rabbit, which is relevant. Casino beard, CB for short, 30-something tall, fat greaseball of a human with no regard for boundaries. Can't believe a girl likes video games and also doesn't want him to touch her. Lamau, what? Chad, 20-something tall as heck, Chad-looking dude, is quite aware of Casino Beard's antics and is slowly becoming my work husband. So this story is a bit of a peculiar one. Mr. Rogers, my shift supervisor, had been doing an amazing job since the cafeteria incident of last story, which was about a month ago. And he made sure that Casino Beard and I were nowhere near each other and made sure that we had separate breaks. But I would see him every now and again, and he would go out of his way to say some of the dumbest shit. <laughs> Whatever, not as bad as him following me at work, I guess. To summarize the last story quite briefly, Casino Beard brought on his creepy crap while Mr. Rogers was off taking a dump on our break. <laughs> All I wanted to do was eat my mozzarella sticks. <laughs> Damn, I could go for some mozzarella sticks too, man. I got a hankering. <laughs> so, as I have made painfully obvious, yeah, I work a night shift at this casino. So that meant about midnight to 8 a.m. Something worth noting about this casino is that it has absolutely no windows, unless you're near an entrance or an exit, and no clocks at all. That is how most casinos are laid out, I found, and OP will explain why. <laughs> this creates the illusion of an absence of time and the outside world, and therefore it really fucked with me when I went into work and it was dark as hell, and then when I would leave work, it's sunrise. Night shift is never easy, man. I sat in a gas station doing night shifts, I think I talked about that briefly, and I would watch the sunrise through the little window and it still screwed with me. And that was when I was young. <laughs> now I think I'm way too old for night shifts. Even though I do make most of my YouTube videos at night. <laughs> but it's a personal choice. It's different when you're forced to. Anyways, to say that I was having a hard time adjusting is generous. It was so strange because at the time I was training for athletic events. So I'd go home, take a short nap, then deal with my fur children and then work out for four hours and then nap again and then work. How does that happen? OP is like the bionic woman or something. <laughs> I mostly did 5K or 10K races for anyone who cares. And in general, I was trying to help treat a joint disorder, but yeah, that's a whole nother can of worms. Now, this was my routine, and I don't know about you, but I'm not neurotypical, so I damn near have a stroke if my routine is vastly interrupted. You need to give me like three to five days notice if you want to interrupt my day. I mean, I do feel that pretty hard, but <laughs> life rarely works this way. Anyways, like in a previous story, I was in bed with my dog, checking my Instagram and all that. My main account was I. Nothing new, just silently judging everyone else's life choices because I'm insecure about mine. <laughs> uh, sounds like being 18. Man, when you're a teenager, you're the coolest thing on the planet. <laughs> then you hit 30 and you're like, oh god, has everything before this been a lie? <laughs> no, you were just wrong. It's simple. <laughs> then I switched over to my rabbit's Instagram account. I have two rabbits. One is just small and white with blue eyes and is perfect. So to prevent my main account from being overrun with photos of her, I made a separate one, mostly for friends who actually want to see her and my family who adore her. Those are about the only followers. And as you could have predicted, guess whomst the fuck would have followed the account? <laughs> uh, it was of course our lovely friend, Casino Beard. 
Bro, these neckbeards, man, they're good at stalking through the internet. You get a job in IT, you'll be set for life. Instead, he wants to be like the creepiest security guard ever for some reason. Probably because there's no expectations about what needs to get done. It's basically just wheeling around ships and standing there intimidating people that might have robbed the casino. Honestly, I don't think anybody's dumb enough to rob a casino, actually. It's got to be like a pretty plush gig, you know? <laughs> Maybe I'm going to pick up that job. If it weren't for the hours and like, you know, showing up somewhere that I don't want to be and staying there for eight hours. <laughs> I can't ever go back to a regular job, man. Don't fail me now, YouTube. Anyways, I digress, as usual. I swear to God, Casino Beard's profile pic looked like an old-ass MySpace angle with his greasy hair in his face and, of course, a fedora. <laughs> Classic. Though in the last story where he followed one of my accounts, I had an issue with him looking at photos of my dog on there. The first thing on the front of my mind was, he doesn't deserve to see the perfection that is my son. And then the generic fear of your work stalker making things personal. Now, if you haven't been following the story closely, I have. <laughs> I'd recently realized that Casino Beard is basically just a sack fag of shit. But I firmly do believe that he has the ability and potentially the intent to hurt me. So I had, and still have, a slight fear of him hurting me or the like. Forcing himself on me, perhaps. Yeah, I digress. The account for my Aryan rabbit was public also, and he commented on one of the older posts, and it just sounded like something that a serial killer would say. <laughs> she looks so helpless, heart. Excuse me, but what the actual fuck? <laughs> now that fear of him hurting me stabbed me in the heart, and twisted into a fear of him hurting the only things that mattered to me. Hell to the no. I wasn't shaking or anything, but you know when you're about to cry, and your eyes are extra moist, and the back of your throat starts to clench and hurt? It was that feeling, just utter helplessness. I deleted the comment and blocked him from that profile too. I got up and scooped my bun bun off the floor where she was sleeping and just held her for a while. I was way too hyped for first nap. I went on about my day as usual, but I was still being tugged at by such an uncomfortable feeling. I had told my mom, who I live with, that a coworker was stalking me, and I showed her a screenshot of the inappropriate comment. If I can find it, I'll post it, but after I quit, I did erase all physical evidence of his debauchery. She was understanding, and everyone in the house to this day makes sure that the house is always locked and replaced all the windows with safety glass that sounds like a gunshot when it's broken. We resorted to a security system near the end, but yeah, that's for another story. Fast forward a bit. It is now 11 p.m. Well, we skipped all the train and stuff. All right, I'm with you. <laughs> I took the back roads to get to work because my car was utter crap. It basically wouldn't go above 50 miles per hour or go uphill without losing speed. I had crashed my car into a bus. <laughs> Not my fault. So the front end looked like a nightmare. What I'm trying to say is that my car was very, very easily identifiable. Wait, not your fault, but you crashed it into a bus? I, I, I don't know where to go with this, man. <laughs> if it's not your fault, then like, shouldn't insurance cover it or something like that? I remember crashing my first car. Hood was all crumpled up. I only had to deal with that for about a week. And then insurance was like, hey, here's some money. <laughs> like, all right. Awesome. So, yeah, that, that statement seems a little weird to me. But whatever. We moving on. I can't dwell for too long. <laughs> I'm putting on my jacket and sharing the last of my dinner with my dog. She legit only wakes up to eat whatever I don't. And then passes back out in front of the radiator. <laughs> Life of a dog. I open my front door to be blasted in the face by New England winter cold in the middle of the night. Ugh. My car sputtered as I started it. One of the headlights refused to turn on, but eventually started blinking into existence. <laughs> I took the back route that goes basically directly from my house to the road leading towards the casino, but it was about 35 minutes as opposed to a quick 15 minutes on the highway that my car would basically be unable to make. 
Bro, you good. Just stay in the far right lane. <laughs> 50 miles an hour. Just pretend you're an old lady. Get like a gray wig or something. <laughs> <laughs> Save 20 minutes every day for one gray wig. That's quite an investment. <laughs> now, imagine it. It's the backwoods of fucking New England at 11.10 p.m. at night. It's like 3 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a weekday. So you would think that the roads would be relatively empty, right? Yeah, I wish. I drove down a massive hill that takes you through a smaller town, and then to the empty woods that the road goes through. Someone was behind me. Two little headlights attached to a white car. They looked like they were going really fast. Like, this is a residential area, so the speed limit was 35. But this motherfucker was whipping it down this icy-ass freaking hill. <laughs> you gotta die. I was secretly hoping that they would rear-end me so I could sue and also not have to go to work. <laughs> uh, I've been there, but dreams never come true. Aw, that's sad. It was a double yellow line. This dude passed me and flung down the road. Okay, man, you do you. I just want to go and make some money. After five minutes, I'm at a stoplight near a gas station. The light turns green and my car starts to chug forwards. Someone whips out of the gas station and has his brights on. Guess where this asshole just has to be? Like maybe three inches behind my rear bumper. <sighs> Whatever. Just a jackass with somewhere important to be at 11.15 p.m. So go ahead, pass me, bitch. <laughs> but he didn't. The whole ride, I was maintaining maybe a solid 40 miles per hour, but this dude was right behind me. We get to a broken yellow line, but they're still just there. Okay, whatever. I was maybe two miles from the nearest town, and it would be suburbs and small city road for the rest of the drive. Maybe they just, like, really like to look at the back of my head. Oh, he does. <laughs> this is like bad vibes all around, bro. In the middle of the woods being tailgated by a neckbeard. Oh, what a nightmare. We finally make it to where there are just an ass load of houses. And I was hoping that this dude would turn off onto one of the side streets. But nah. He's riding right up my ass with his brights on. Well, what better time to do a brake check than now? <laughs> I tap my brakes a couple of times in the town, slowing back down, and this bitch honked at me. Well, y'all should know me enough by now that I rolled the window down and let the bird fall victim to the fucking freezing dry air. And then he starts flashing his lights. Oh god, it was the same car as before. The one that was speeding down the hill. Well, with his lights flashing, I could vaguely make out a head the size of a manhole cover, with the same reflective golden shine on his chest that my name tag has. He followed me from basically my house, and now he's following me to work. Yeah, dude, this story is starting to get, like, really real. I hate it. This is also the night that my car was pushed to its limits, I slammed the gas, and my car hissed and screamed at me, but eventually, I was going faster. I know these roads by heart, so I was easily whipping around corners and shit, and his car was struggling to keep up. But why was he trying to keep up? I finally made it to the parking lot. I pulled into the public lot that was basically an overflow lot for casino patrons. I parked my car as close to the crosswalk as I could. My blood was boiling. I was going to shit myself <laughs> in anger. <laughs> That's a good tactic. That'll make people stay away real good. <laughs> Casino Beard parks just a row behind me and jumps out of his car screaming. Why are you driving like such a fucking psychopath? He was screaming. Why was your ass following me from home? You big dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say the R word. Sorry for the slur, but like, I was in the moment. But you could have picked a better word for the dramatic reenactment. Come on, OP. <laughs> the employee center thing was right across the street. People were standing outside waiting for the shuttle, 
and three of them took off in a run over to us. Why does it fucking matter? You could have gotten me killed! He was screaming. His normally gross, spongy voice was bellowing like a lion with severe brain damage. <laughs> you were the prick with your lights on right behind me! Chad and two others showed up. What the hell's going on here? One of them tried to scream over both of us. I was borderline in tears. Chad grabbed my arm and basically had to fireman carry me to the employment office area. Casino Beard was still over there, screaming. I was going insane. He followed me from my house. And he has the nerve to try and gaslight me, saying that it was my fault? Worth noting, I found out that this guy lives maybe 10 miles in the other direction from the casino, so he actively went out of his way to find me. It is impossible for this to be a coincidence. Ugh, goosebumps. I hate it. We made it into the office. Chad sat me down on one of the chairs, but I was going insane, screaming about how he had followed me and that I was quitting. One of the other guys inside had called tribal police. While I was going off, apparently Casino Beard and the other two guys were stopped by tribal police and brought to the main casino for questioning. One of these guys was aware of Casino Beard's generally creepy antics and said that Casino Beard was trying to run me off the road. I mean, yeah, that's close enough to the truth, isn't it? <laughs> An officer walked into the office where I was still busy just completely losing my shit. They attempted to calm me down, but it ended with me throwing my name tag and badge on the floor and screaming, I quit! And another officer had to come and help me calm down. I eventually relaxed a little bit. During the drive Chad and I had to the main casino where the tribal police station was, I refused to be within a hundred feet of Casino Beard, so we had to use an empty conference room for my interrogation. I'm going to drastically shorten what happened here to just save us all some time. I told the police about his weird comment on my Insta and some of his past behavior, and even they agreed, much like a lot of you, that Casino Beard should have been fired, or at least reprimanded. <laughs> I believe then, and I do still firmly believe, that if we work the day shift, Casino Beard would have been fired already. Night shift just doesn't care. I told them everything about my car ride, and then I was told via radio what Casino Beard's story was. Basically, I was driving like a maniac and wouldn't let him pass me on the road, literally suggesting my piece of shit car could have kept up with his car going uphill. Okay, seems accurate. But I doubt the police would know that, right? And figuring it out would require some of that, what's it called? Police work. Nah, nah. <laughs> we just take these two stories, compare and contrast. The truth is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> my mom ended up having to pick me up. I was in hysterics and my car wouldn't start. It had to be towed and scrapped and I blame him for all of this. If he hadn't chased me, my car wouldn't have broken down completely. And you guys will never guess what happened. Well, because I quit, the fucking upper level management people in the security department didn't do a goddamn thing to Casino Beard. He went back to work that very night. Ugh, such a nightmare, dude. I've heard of bad workplaces, but this is just abysmal. I had my mom bring a change of clothes so I could immediately return my uniform. It took me that long to quit, but I did it, finally. And that's the end. Lamau bet. <laughs> nope, this asshole just couldn't seem to leave me alone. I went home and was hysterically crying. My mom said tomorrow we were going down to the police station to file a restraining order, but that didn't make me feel all that much better. So I did what every self-respecting teenager does that night. I smoked a bunch of weed, <laughs> called up my best guy friend and cried and made him spend the night. Now, there is the last final bit. I'm sure a lot of you will love the ending, but to answer some questions, he never does get fired. The final will probably be really long, so expect it in about a week. I love y'all. Peace, my dudes. 
edit for grammar and whatever. Also, I just want to say thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I appreciate every view and every comment and trying to answer questions, so feel free to ask on this or any previous posts. I do have an epilogue prepared to say how my life is now, how Chad is doing, and also, of course, an update on Casino Beard. And I'm thinking that once this is over, maybe every now and then, I'll post some other stories about Casino Beard that I just didn't think were groundbreaking enough to include in any of these longer posts. Let me know if that's something that you'd like. Also, PM me from my rabbit's Instagram if you want, Lamau. <laughs> I'm good on the rabbit's Instagram. I got an Instagram, I think, somewhere around here, but I don't use that shit. <laughs> but yeah, Casino Beard has consistently proven himself to be complete trash just with the way that he talks and treats OP, but this is definitely taking it to a whole nother level. You know what I mean? Who knows what he actually had planned? Definitely a terrifying situation. OP put herself into danger by, like, accelerating her car down the icy roads and crap like that. Like, this could have ended so much worse than it did. I'm glad that it was only the car that died, to be quite honest with you. I mean, if Casino Beard skidded off the road into a ditch, I, I probably wouldn't feel too bad for him. I don't want him to die, though. Just, just severe injury. <laughs> That's fine. But I guess we'll see what happens with Casino Beard and OP as we get into the last part of the story. The end of the line for Casino Beard. Part done of the Casino Beard saga. What's up dudes, it's your boy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> I'm back to finish it. I promise I will include my reasons for why I haven't posted in like a week at the end. So this is it. The final part of Casino Beard, my borderline stalker ex co worker who turned towards sexual assault to get my sweet ass. <laughs> uh, consider this your trigger warning. Uh oh. I'll include another when it gets to it, but it's not anything too intense. Well, that's a relief at least. <laughs> I thought this could have gone like the Wheezy Beard way, and I don't know if I'm ready for that today. Whew. So our players are OP. 18 year old girl, first time quitting a job without putting in a two weeks notice. Apparently I'm neckbeard bait. <laughs> Casino beard. We don't need to spend any more time on this piece of trash than we already have. And then we've got mom, Des, uh, OP's mom. <laughs> I live with her. She likes me a lot. Enough said. I mean, I hope she likes you. You came out of a body for God's sake. <laughs> Fake dad is my mom's boyfriend, a gun toting army vet. Damn, fake dad, though? That's some shade. <laughs> if he makes your mom happy, like, that should be enough. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get too hung up on it again. We last left off on me crying because Casino Beard followed me from my house to work, driving recklessly in the middle of fucking winter, and then tried to blame the entire situation on me. I quit on the spot. And my car also died that night. Rip Miranda, my 2005 Chrysler minivan. Now, I don't want to go into great detail because I've filed this whole incident under traumatic events in my brain folder, so I don't even remember half of it. Mostly, I had to give a statement, and my mom had to bring me home, and I cried. A lot. You ever cry so hard your lipstick comes off? I haven't. <laughs> it was one of those nights. Ugh. That next morning, my mom has a security system installed. We took down his social media shit and made sure that everyone close to me blocked him on as many platforms as they could. Even my brother, who I haven't spoken to in like five years, blocked Casino Beard. Police and detectives were around my house and stuff, asking even more questions, and they increased patrol in my neighborhood for the next month meaning that every three minutes, a cop would drive by, day and night. God damn, New England got the budget for that? <laughs> That's wild. From what contact I had with my now ex-boss and the security department, Casino Beard was suspended without pay. Oh, well, that's something. I thought he went back to work and stuff. Now, I guess the trigger warning starts here. Remember, I'm telling the bare bones of this story because I have forgotten slash repressed slash refused to acknowledge most of the details. 
Not three days after I had quit, he came to my house. What? Straight up pulled into my driveway like he belonged here and knocked on the door. Dude's got like a set of brass balls or a walnut brain. <laughs> Possibly both. My dogs were going insane. It was like 4 a.m. I was still awake thanks to my ruined sleep schedule. I opened the door casually, assuming that maybe my brother, who also worked weird night hours, forgot the code door house or the key. It was him. In that moment, I was scared shitless, but for the sake of the story, I'll try and be more funny about it. His grotesque body was in the exact same clothes from when he had crashed a smaller get-together at a sports bar. Gross sweatpants, gross t-shirt, sweat stains everywhere, minus the fedora, but his hair was down, revealing how horribly thinning it was and how truly greasy it was. It gleamed in my porch light. Looking at his hair was like when pirates look at a treasure chest full of gold. <laughs> Just so shiny. Borderline wet. Do you know how long you need to not shower to have your hair get that greasy? God damn. <laughs> He didn't say anything. He just pushed the door open further and stepped inside. Oh my god. The shock of seeing him passed, so I did the only natural thing. I screamed like hell and kicked him where the sun don't shine. <laughs> uh, proper OP. He bent down a little in recoil, but I could see in his eyes that he was not here to fuck around. I was able to slip around him while he doubled over in that split second, but he shot right back up. I imagine this is how everyone in the book Frankenstein felt when the monster appeared in front of them. I backed up towards my couch and grabbed the nearest thing. A lamp. What is it with girls always hitting home invaders with lamps? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. It is effective. Especially if you have a glass or easily breakable lamp. Well, there went the stained glass lamp that we got from my grandfather after he passed. I'm sure your grandfather will rest easy knowing that he helped defend you, at least in some way. So don't sweat that. The lamp shattered into like eight big ass pieces when I slammed it across his head. Get him, OP! Destroy him now! <laughs> I could already see a few lines of red peeking out of his nasty fucking skin. I bet I popped a few pimples in the process of hitting him, so in a way, I was helping. <laughs> You're also teaching him not to commit sexual assault, which is also helping. <laughs> this is too much. Ugh, because I had already opened the door, the security alarm didn't go off. But luckily, my mom had heard me scream and had already called 911. Immediately after I hit him with the lamp, he was up again. All I could see in his eyes was pure rage. He had the same look as my snake when he was ready to strike. He had pushed me against the couch placing his fucking ogre hands, no offense Shrek, on my crotch and one on my boob. Jesus. He immediately went for the nipple ring and pulled at it fucking hard. I swear to God he was about to pull it through. <sighs> you weren't kidding, were you? He said. Now at the time, I was fucking petrified. But in hindsight, he sounded like one of those super emo dudes on YouTube who tries to talk in a super low, spooky voice, but it just sounds childish and weird. But at the time, I just wanted his hands off of me. Thank God people had woken up. BANG! Drywall fell on top of Casino Beard's head. He let go of me immediately and turned around, but ended up sticking his nose in the barrel of a shotgun. Fake Dad was on the other end of it. Oh my God, Fake Dad for reals! Thank God. He's a real one, man. <laughs> Thank you, lucky stars, for that, man. Whew, I don't remember much of the rest. Police came very quickly because they were already in the neighborhood, and he was arrested on charges of sexual assault, trespassing, and something else. It might have been a charge related to stalking, and also disturbing the peace. There was a lot of drywall damage. <laughs> Fake dad had shot an almost two-foot hole in the ceiling right above where Casino Beard had me. My parents had a lawyer involved immediately, and we had a temporary restraining order in place within the next few hours. Again, police came, took statements from us all, 
took pictures of the damage, and assessed said damages. Halfway through the police being involved, I tapped out and went to cry in the shower. For anyone wondering, my nipple's fine now, but they took my shirt for evidence because there was a nice stream of blood running down the only white shirt that I own, or owned. I had a nice collection of bruises on my boob as well because of his grip. Jesus, man, what a monster. In the following days, we spoke to the lawyer and got a permanent restraining order in place, so he's not allowed within three feet of me or my family and can't contact me or my family in any way, shape, or form. That being said, to make everything easier, I do not go to the casino for the graveyard shift, which uh, isn't that hard to do, honestly. <laughs> Now the real question that everybody generally has, why didn't you sue? Basically, because it wouldn't be worth the money and the trouble. The casino wouldn't settle because there was no proof that he created an unsafe work environment. We did get a settlement from the court system for his charges for coming into my home. Legally, I don't think I'm allowed to talk about the court proceedings because there was in fact a money settlement. Some of that money went towards lawyer fees, the rest ended up going towards medical bills a few months later. But back to the casino suing shenanigans. My lawyer pointed out that it would be a long case, and that whatever money I would win would probably go to lawyer fees, and I also lived in a state where monetary payments as settlements are taxed. Yep. If you get raped and get a $10,000 settlement in my state, that gets taxed. Like, 20%. Ugh. And I hate my state representatives, so... I partially didn't sue because I didn't want them to take my money. Assholes. <laughs> Even if I did win, after everything was said and done, I'd end up with like $3,000 at the most. Plus, I'd have to miss work and school for court dates, and uh, I was just ready to fucking move on. Where are they now? Well, Casino Beard was bailed out. By who? I don't know. His suspension at the casino was lifted, and he went back to work where he still works to this day, as far as I know. Jesus Christ. How? How? What? That is wild. It's a fire and ice casino in New England, and I will never be visiting because of their treatment of OP, and this scumbag is still working there? What? 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 I can't anymore. <sighs> At least Chad is doing fine. He now works at a different job in the casino that pays more and has better hours. No, Chad and I never dated, but we are still good friends. I'm a little worse for the wear. After the whole incident, my migraine issue got way worse, so I've been on medication and shit for that. I also have another chronic illness that involved joint pain and stuff, so I haven't been doing as many races as I would like to. And that also makes it harder to type and all that jazz, it's kind of similar to arthritis. And it's also hard to look at a screen without getting a headache, hence why I post so irregularly. I've been in and out of hospitals for all of that, but whatever, I'm a big kid, <laughs> I can deal. I'm going to school for phlebotomy, and I've been working as a CNA again, what I did before the casino, and I hate it. <laughs> uh. My rabbits are good, and in general, I don't know, life is fine. It's all fine. I have a boyfriend now who buys me Wendy's and sushi, and I spend a lot of time on Reddit. <laughs> Thank you for following my trials and tribulations. In the future, I'll post little stories that I didn't think were important enough or relevant enough for the main plot of Casino Beard. Live long and prosper, brothers. Another thing to note is this whole time I commented on the shitty quality of his skin or his weight, Here's the thing, I wouldn't have commented on it if he wasn't actively trying to stalk or attack me. If you're large with acne skin and whatever else, I'm sure you're a lovely person. But if you try to screw with me, I will shit into your soul. I don't give a damn. <laughs> OP? More like OG. <laughs> oh, Jesus, man. That was a heavy ending. I know that OP said it wouldn't get too intense, and it was broken up a little bit by her jokes and stuff, but man, this is a traumatic event, like, in every way. I really hope that you're able to get into therapy at some point for this OP, because this is definitely the kind of thing that will stick with you and needs to get sorted out.
in one way or another. I'm super grateful for fake dad. I don't know why you call him fake dad. That's a real dad move, okay? Protecting what is, I suppose, your stepdaughter. And I guess it's good that he didn't, like, shoot Casino Beard in the head or something like that. <laughs> that requires some massive restraint on his part. Like I said previously, I don't want to see the dude dead, but I would like to see him in prison. You know what I mean? I don't know how he didn't end up going to prison. OP said, like, he's a first-time offender, had to register as a sex offender and pay him some money and stuff, but I don't care. Get him in jail. This dude is, like, out just walking around after the horror that he put upon OP. Ugh, that's despicable. Justice system, my foot. <laughs> God damn, man. I, I just can't believe that. That is such a jagged pill to swallow and just be like, okay, I guess, I guess he's out there walking around somewhere. Ugh, terrifying. I didn't think this was gonna go the Wheezy Beard route, but it most definitely did. Not all the way, but fucking close enough for me. Oh, I'm so sorry that happened to you, OP. But hopefully it was cathartic for you to get this all written and out there. And I hope two years later you are doing better than you were when this was all posted. It definitely serves as a good reminder. Like we always say on this channel, neckbeards, they're so doofy. You like to laugh at them. They're like big, fat, silly clowns. But then something like this happens. You know, they essentially act like a cornered animal, don't see any other way to get the thing that they want and have probably been obsessing over and, oh God, it ends up going this way. And it's so unfortunate. Like, why can't we just drag these people out and give them that old yeller treatment? You know, that Lenny from Mice and Men, just one behind the ear. Story's done. Wrap it. It is so scary to think that this guy's still out there. I don't know how many times I said that, but Jesus, I will not be going to any New England casinos anytime soon. <sighs> I hope you guys will let me know what you thought in the comments. I hope that you'll also like, comment, and or subscribe on the video if you haven't already. We've also got a bunch of links in the description. Check them out at your leisure. Those links do include my social media if you're trying to get in contact with me. A little bit of that Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Oh, and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all. But especially, Robert Waits, TSM Kirby, Teddy the Police, Aaron W, That Big Delicious Jelly Donut, Candy Sora, Fire Drake, Livison, Silent Revolver, Zathra, Zero MMX, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Ralph Stower, Aaron Lennox, The OG James Cook, J.M. Coon, Jerry, John Hero, KK, Miss Monday, Mr. J, My Boy Nat One Nick, Lady Nicks, Katekin, Sidestep, Cider Drinker, Serrated Ash, Siegfried, Staples Yeet, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, Tato Ferret, That Duck and Bug, the One True Fusky, Redwind, Leon Embers, Naga Viper, John Endors, A Roxers, Cake Jerry. That's a different Jerry. <laughs> Mark 211, Organic Cam, Princess Rosalie, Ghosty, The Last Shinobi, and the Maestro Zuka Cervantes. But that's not all. We got a new friend joining us today. Welcome to the fold, Fisher Diggy. This is a heavy one to come in on you guys, but um, I am glad to have you here supporting the channel for when things get demonetized. This video, mmm, pushing the envelope. I'm, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with this one, but it is a story that needs to be told, so I will get it out there. If you guys would like to join these lovely people in supporting the channel monetarily, that is absolutely huge, massive. I thank you very, very much in advance, but if you can't right now, don't sweat it too hard, guys. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow, because really... The views is how my beard stays buttered. <laughs> In order to join us again, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there. For real. Wash your hands, but also carry some pepper spray. Do not answer the door without a bludgeoning object of some kind in your hand. Especially at 4 a.m. What the hell? Ugh. Also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe consuming some more light-hearted Red X videos. Most of them are light-hearted. This is uh, a bit heavier than it should be. But props to OP for powering through. So, I hope that you guys will always remember that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one. And until then, friends, bye-bye.